this uh this treasure that we have these books these writings of the great saints do we value them are they for us a pure treasure invaluable if they're not then we have a problem we need to put on a different mind said and come to the knowledge of the truth of things that this is should be our uh, our desire to, to dwell in and read and pour over the writings of the Holy Fathers. It's essential. Theology is not just for a few academic theologians. God forbid. God forbid. Let's hear what the elder has to say about this, this uh, contemporary plague in the 20th century, 21st century, on the people of God, is that they are in total ignorance of the church fathers. Now, once upon a time, he talks about how in the West, because of the rise of Protestantism, the papal Protestants reject, uh, uh, sought to do away with the reading of scriptures that had been now printed in, in many, many copies and were accessible to all the Christians because of the bad and heretical interpretations that they saw coming about uh, all over the, uh, the European landscape. And so they said, well, better not to read lest you fall into delusion. And there is this, that's not the right position of course that that's a very mistaken position that they took in, in, in i don't know desperation or whatever it might have been but not not the proper way at all and of course they've repented of that and they and and eventually uh uh all of the western christians the various sect, sect, sectarian groups or or churches they all embrace the reading of scripture so it was a very a grave error well if we are talking about the fathers being something reserved for academic theologians were not much different than that response of the of the pope and and the papal protestants to the reformed protestants of the day we're not much different if we keep the church fathers on our shelves and we don't take them down and read them and we, or we think we can't because we're just simple people or we think they're only for the academic theologians this is a grave error listen to what elder athanasius says if we we do this we remain in total ignorance he says and we lose it all such that our people become alienated from the mindset of the church this in turn brings about another evil which is that the mindset of the church is divorced from academic theology not only are we divorced from the church fathers but academic theology the supposed theologians that only they can speak about the the, the church's theology they become separated from the church, the life of the church, the prayers of the church. This is very characteristic of academic theology today. People who become academic theologians, they could be, they're very bright. They're very gifted in many ways. They analyze things. They pour over things. They're systematic. They're, 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 they're stellar acad academicians, right? And yet, if they're not immersed deeply and going through the process of purification, and going deeper in the life of the church, the experience of the grace of God, the prayer of Jesus and all the rest, that are presuppositions for understanding the fathers, right? That's what all of us should be struggling to do. Both and, not just one or the other, not just, oh, I'm just going to take my prayer up and go over here in the corner. And I'm no, and you pour over the scriptures or and the fathers or not just, oh, I'm just going to busy myself with reading the fathers, reading the scriptures. I don't need to do the whole ascetic thing. I don't need to do the prayer of Jesus. Do I really? Do I have to go to services? They're kind of boring. I don't understand them. They're in a foreign language. All of this kind of thinking, this division of the life of the church and, and the, the, the various aspects of the life of the church, for whatever reason, is a tragedy and will not lead to purification, illumination, glorification, the, the goals, uh, and, the, and the healing of our souls, ultimately. Right? We're going to be, uh, in part at least, we're going to be deficient. Uh, but it's much worse than that in, in reality. It's a great misfortune. Theology, he says, has its treasury in the church, not in university lecture halls. Of course, the theologian is one who prays, not one who studies. The theologian is one who prays. That's what a theologian is. Somebody who knows God experientially. The atheos, the atheist, is one who does not have God, right? The one who has the word of God, who speaks the the, the word of God who communicates to the world the word of God is the theologos, right? The one who has and teaches the, the truth about God. So true theology is indispensably connected with the church. You can't be a theologian if you're not in the church. Whatever you say you are, whatever you think you are, it's a part of the definition of being a theologian. 
Now, there are all kinds of people who call themselves those people. I, I studied for 15 years, whatever it was. I was around the academic theology, you know, and I, I walked away from it after doing it all, right? Getting my PhD happily. I don't, I don't miss it. I, I miss teaching the seminarians. I miss teaching people who are really serious about their faith. That's all, always a wonderful experience. But I don't, I never was much in, interested in that disconnection. That, 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 and, and unfortunately, it's it's filled with all kinds of self. Uh, uh, absorbed, uh, my latest book, my latest take, uh, you know, and all the rest, it can be very, very toxic and, and, and just like the rest of the world. So not saying that all theologians like that, God forbid, there are plenty of people who are struggling in the seminaries and other places who are struggling to be true Orthodox theologians in the church. I, I don't want to make it uh, black and white. It's not, but I, there is this, this problem today. And I'm really glad the elder points it out here. We need to, to to be cognizant of it and not run to those who have the title, uh, the PhD behind their name, thinking that here we have somebody who is a true theologian. That's not the criteria laid down by the fathers. Now, the fathers of the church are, I'm sorry, all the true theologians were fathers of the church, not professors at a university. Again, very basic, and yet we need to say it and drive it home. Fathers of the church, the true theologians, fathers of the church, not professors very very few <laughs> maybe in the 20th century where, where, where we have orthodoxy warming to the idea that academic theology is something that it can it can be a you know embrace because we didn't really have academic theology frankly it's a western phenomenon until the 20th century for the most part for most in 19th and 20th century for a lot of orthodox and it, and it, it is the source of a lot of distortion right a lot of the westernization that came to the Orthodox, especially in Slavic lands in Russia, where they're teaching in Latin in the 1700s. I mean, that is a distortion, a gross distortion of our life in church and an understanding of theology, where we're following blindly uh, the, the the trends of the day, which would have been, uh, you know, Western theology and and, and European uh, intellectual uh, movements and all the rest. So, the fathers of the church are the property of the church which is precisely why a sermon must be theological, right? Uh, another big thing he talks about, we're not going to get into it tonight, how important it is for sermons to be both theological, very theologically based, and understand the theology of the church, and preaching and teaching repentance, always calling people to repentance. Theology is an integral part of their church. It's our nourishment when we must return to it. The great theologian, Father George Florovsky, who was an academic theologian, in our times especially, con uh, concentrate, on dogmatics, he says, teach the dogmas of our church. This is an extreme necessity, he says. My friends, today our ignorance of the doctrine of our faith causes us to fall off a thousand cliffs. We must return to our theology. Okay, a little bit break from the book of Revelation, but very important here, because what do we, we just we just talked about? How important it is to, to run to the church fathers like St. John Damascus, St. Ephraim of Syria, right? And understand the scriptures through the great theologians of the church, those God seers. St. Ephraim, St. John, they were, they were monastics. They lived in monasteries. They lived in a stream ascetic life. And then they were made theologians, not because they were philosophically trained. That They did that too, but that was not what made them theologians.